Okay, good afternoon. Um, so I'm just gonna give an overview of our research programs at the NIJ and um, with a special emphasis on TRACE. Um, first of all, uh, for those of you who aren't sure exactly where we fit in within the Justice Department, uh, there to your left, uh, with the blue circle around it is the Office of Justice Program. So it's one of many offices within USDOJ. And then within the Office of Justice Programs, there are several other offices. And down at the bottom, you see the National Institute of Justice. And then within NIJ, there are also um, half of NIJ is the Office of Research and Evaluation. They, they're our social scientists. So they look at various social science questions related to criminal justice. And then the other half is the Office of Science and Technology, which itself has three divisions. Okay, so and there we are, the investigative, investigative and Forensic Sciences Division. Uh, we do lots of different things. I touched on this this morning. We are the R&D agency of US DOJ, so we have active R&D programs. But unlike the rest of NIJ, we also provide lots of funds for building capacity and uh, reducing backlogs, mostly in DNA, but not all in DNA. So I'll mention Coverdell today. Um, OK, so what is our goal under R&D? Um, to develop tools and technologies that can enhance the capacity, capability, et cetera, et cetera of crime scene evidence, again, think uh, faster, better, cheaper. Now, how do we decide how, what we're gonna do research on? Do we kind of just work in a vacuum or do we, even though we're forensic scientists by, by background, uh, we go to the forensic practitioner community and we say to the community, um, please help us develop our research agendas. So we have technical working groups and they support the uh, four phases of um, R&D as we see them. Research development and then you have to get your research deliverables into the field so you need to go through test and evaluation to get them to that point. Um, so we look to the forensic practitioner community to sit on these twigs and guide us on research uh, needs and requirements. Um, the twigs look at our existing research portfolios, they kind of weigh in on them to make sure that they're targeting the true needs of the practitioners. They help us uh, with future uh, funding solicitations, help us develop our needs and technologies. They evaluate ongoing projects and programs, and um, they can also act as a focus group or as a test bed as well. Um, there's a whole lot of different uh, twigs within uh, the Office of Science and Technology that go well beyond forensic science. I'm going through these quickly. If you have questions, uh, I'll be around the rest of the week as well as others from NIJ. Um, starting in 2006, the President's DNA Initiative, which had been around for a few years at that point, but in 2006, we were able to uh, use DNA initiative funding for non-DNA forensics in R&D. So that helped. It gave us a boost in the funding that we can use for the non-DNA discipline. So we have our DNA R&D program. Our general forensics program is anything that's not DNA. Uh, so it could be trace, it could be toxicology, controlled substances, question documents, entomology, anthropology. <clears throat> and we have active research projects in all of those areas. Okay. Um, we have a very, uh, it's a very competitive program. We have yearly solicitations. We have a very, um, uh, comprehensive peer review process, uh, all external peer reviewed, and um, we at NIJ, we are scientists, forensic scientists and, and um, researchers, and we manage uh, all the R&D grants. So we have our R &D, DNA R&D program, um, where we look to the uh, <clears throat> technologies through molecular biology, genetics, and biotechnology, and guide them toward forensic applications. And then we have our general forensics R&D program. And as I said, uh, it, it spans all of the non-DNA disciplines. Um, again, we have the faster, better, cheaper theme. But we also looked to, uh, to some of the disciplines where many of the uh, procedures more, were more of qualitative um, types of measures and looked to uh, develop quantitative measures or ones that can give you a statistical uh, evaluation of the comparison. And we also look to see, well, are there any other types of analytes or substances out there that we never really thought would have any forensic applications? Maybe they do, and we could look at those too. I don't know how well you can see this. This is a table, uh, and it goes actually back to 1996, of all the non-DNA disciplines and how many 
projects, they're not all active any longer, but uh, how many projects we had in each of those disciplines. Under TRACE, there were 15, although I believe there's about nine that are active now. Uh, I'm not going to go into any detail on these slides. Um, we can be happy to speak with you later on. Um, this is just uh, kind of a list of our R&D projects in the tr area of TRACE. Uh, some of them, I believe, may have closed by now. But just to kind of give you a flavor of the kinds of projects that we are funding under our general forensics R&D program. OK. Uh, in 2007, which is now uh, and well, it ends September 30th, but we had uh, four general forensics um, R&D solicitations. Now, up until uh, about a year or two ago, we would just have a single solicitation each year for general forensics that spanned all the disciplines for all kinds of research. It was very big and broad. A few years ago, we decided to make them much more focused and directed and um, have multiple solicitations. Now. Fire and arson, that was, uh, 07 was the first time we had a fire and arson solicitation. Okay, 08. Um, now, the Graduate Research Fellowship Program, uh, since it's an education um, panel, this is something that NIJ has every year. And um, it awards $20,000 in fellowships to um, PhD students. They must be PhD level students for the dissertation phase of their research, so they have already had to have completed their coursework and their uh, exams and everything else that goes into that and beat the dissertation phase. The final deliverable should be their dissertation. So um, this is an excellent opportunity. Um, Twenty thousand dollars isn't a lot, but it's it's more than I made when I was getting my PhD. So I, you know, we can all relate to that. Um, so you know, we encourage uh, students they need to work through their university to apply for funding under this program. Our R&D uh, solicitations for 08, um, we started this past year having actually two different release dates. Uh, we anticipate having a fall uh, release date for a uh, number of solicitations and then a spring, which would be next, next April. Um, David Hagee this morning did say we would have a trace research and development solicitation. Uh, we're still finalizing that. We do anticipate having a trace solicitation probably in the spring because we're using this meeting as a mechanism to gather more information to make it a really good, strong solicitation. But if you, uh, I listed our, our web page. Uh, you could go there anytime and look at uh, whatever funding opportunities are open at that time. You can also look at um, expired solicitations. So you can see the kinds of R&D solicitations we've had in previous years to kind of get a feel for the types of things we look for, the application process, which can be pretty cumbersome. Um, so it, you know, if you're interested, please visit that web page. Uh, we use grants.gov, which is kind of a government-wide uh, mechanism for uh, receiving grant applications. You can also go to the grants.gov website, and you can subscribe so that you'll get an email notification when these solicitations become available. And that's my last slide. The last thing I wanted to say is um, we have uh, three individuals that uh, work on our general forensics R&D program, Melissa Taylor and Andrew Loudon, who are both here. Uh, at this conference, and Peter Cohen, who is our newest program manager, he came on board just about, I think, late June. He's back at the office. Uh, they are working very hard on these programs. They're doing a fabulous job. This, these programs have really become much stronger over the past few years. So uh, if you have questions about uh, specific projects or the application process or the programs in general, please uh, feel free to see them. Uh, I can also help you. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah.